come on, this is the church that was being prophesied about in Isaiah 60. When it said, arise and shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen on you. For darkness is going to cover the earth, and deep darkness will cover the people. But the Lord will rise on you. Say, on me. And his glory will be seen on you. Say, on me. Then the nations will come to your light. It doesn't even say his light. It says your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Come on, church. It's a day of rising up. It's a day of reflecting the glory of God. It's a day of being radiant. It's a day of arising and shining. Literally, those two words mean wake up and be set on fire. So I'm going to read to you from Proverbs 31. I'm going to read it from the Passion Translation. A little bit different. Um, again, this is a picture of, I believe, Christ's bride, the church. The picture between Solomon and the Shulamite in Song of Solomon is a picture of Christ and his church. So let's look here and see this beautiful picture. So wherever it says she, let's understand he's talking about us. Okay? He's talking about us. Who could ever find a wife like this one? She is a woman of strength and mighty valor. She is full of wealth and wisdom. The price paid for her was greater than many jewels. Her husband, listen to this, speaking of Jesus, her husband has entrusted his heart to her, for she brings him the rich spoils of victory. All throughout her life, she brings him what is good and not evil. She searches out continually to possess that which is pure and righteous. She delights in the work of her hands. She gives out revelation truth to feed others. She's like a trading ship bringing divine supplies from the merchant. Even in the night, even in the night season, what is that speaking to? When things are dark in the earth. Even in the night season, she arises and sets food on the table for the hungry ones in her house and for others. I want you to understand in this season of time, God is stirring a hunger in the hearts and the lives of people. Not just people that are in this house, but how many can feel a stirring of hunger for more of the Lord, more of his power, more of his supernatural demonstration. But I want you to understand, God is stirring a hunger in people out there. God is stirring a hunger that they don't even know how to identify. And it is saying that even in the night season, she, that means us, are going to prepare food of revelation and food of the manna of the word and we're going to feed one another and we're going to feed the people out there so that they can have an encounter with Jesus. Amen. She sets her heart upon a nation and takes it as her own, carrying it within her. She labors there to plant the living vines. I hope that all of you now are taking this nation into your heart. And carrying it within you. Amen. America shall be saved. We decree it again. She wraps herself in strength, might, and power in all her works. She tastes and experiences a better substance. And her shining light will not be extinguished. Our shining light will not be extinguished no matter how dark the night Remember what Pastor Greg said? There's all these words about God bringing us into a new day. And what we need to understand is that a night always precedes a new day. And the Lord said to me earlier this year, don't be afraid of the night. The Lord said, I own the night. Come on, the devil doesn't own the night. God owns the night. And so it says that, I totally lost my place. She tastes and experiences better substance, and her shining light will not be extinguished no matter how dark the night. She stretches out her hands to help the needy, and she lays hold of the wheels of government. Whew. You understand what the church is? See, here's what, here's what we think. We think the bride of Christ, all they do is sit around and make goo-goo eyes at each other. How many marriages do we have here? 
Do you guys sit around all day long making goo-goo eyes at each other? Maybe in the first week. And after that, you're like, okay, let's get on about life, okay? <laughs> we, got a, we got a full life to live, okay? All right? So here, they're busy together, okay? She is known by her extravagant generosity to the poor, for she always reaches out her hands to those in need. She's not afraid of tribulation, for all her household is covered in the dual garments of righteousness and grace. Her clothing is beautifully knit together, a purple gown of exquisite linen. Did you hear them describing in Revelation 22, the bride clothed in linen? Her husband is famous and admired by all, sitting as the venerable judge of his people. Even her works of righteousness she does for the benefit of her enemies. Whoa. Remember Jesus said, bless those that curse you, do good to those that despitefully use you. Bold power and glorious majesty are wrapped around her as she laughs with joy over the latter days. Her teachings are filled with wisdom and kindness as loving instruction pours from her lips. I used to actually pray that in the New King James. It says, um, it says um, in, her, in her tongue is the law of kindness. You know, that, that, her, that her lips speak what's positive and in her tongue is the law of kindness. Because in my early days of discerning and seeing everything that was going on in the world and everything that was going on in the church, I wanted to pray that serenity prayer. Y'all know that serenity prayer? It says, Lord, grant me the serenity to, what, accept the things that I can't change, to change the things that I can change. And then my final line was, and to hide all the dead bodies of the people that have ticked me off, Okay. God had to like totally work grace into my life and loving kindness into my life and mercy into my life. My husband can attest to that, but he's not going to because I have the microphone and he's not going to tell stories on me, okay? It says that, that loving instruction pours from her lips. She watches over the ways of her household and she meets every need that they have. We should be watching for each other. That word there is the word watchman. We should be watchmen for one another. Come on, this is our household. Not our household, it's our household. And we should be watching over one another. We need to watch for our own children, but we need to be watching for one another that live in our household. Her sons and daughters arise in one accord to extol her virtues, and her husband arises to speak of her in glowing terms. There are many valiant and noble ones. This is what he says. You are, there are many valiant and noble ones, but you have ascended above them all. Charm can be misleading and beauty is vain and so quickly fades. But this virtuous woman lives in the wonder, awe, and fear of the Lord. She will be praised throughout eternity. So go ahead and give her the credit that is due, for she has become a radiant woman. And all her loving works of righteousness deserve to be admired at the gateway of every city. Come on, this is the church that was being prophesied about in Isaiah 60. When it said, arise and shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen on you. For darkness is going to cover the earth, and deep darkness will cover the people. But the Lord will rise on you. Say on me. And his glory will be seen on you. Say on me. Then the nations will come to your light. It doesn't even say his light. It says your light. And kings to the brightness of your rising. Come on, church. It's a day of rising up. It's a day of reflecting the glory of God. It's a day of being radiant. It's a day of arising and shining. Literally, those two words mean wake up and be set on fire. Three of you are excited about that. I'm so excited. But I'm telling you that we're, we're really in that time right now that God is looking for people that are hungering and thirsting after him.